Hi, AP Seminar students. Uh, it's Mr. Z again here, uh, giving you another video to help support you with your individual written argument, which is part of performance task two for AP Seminar. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that we've already talked about context paragraphs, and we've already spent time in class outlining. Uh, if you need to work on one of those things before you move into drafting your body, uh, I would highly suggest that. A lot of the heavy lifting and work for body paragraphs actually gets done in the outline. So a lot of the organization stuff should have happened already. Only proceed with this video whenever you're ready to move into drafting your body paragraphs. Now, uh, this video today is really going to be focusing, again, like I said, on body paragraphs, which tend to be located uh, most of the points in rows three, four, and five on the AP seminar rubric. Uh, as we know, row three is really focusing on um, understanding and analyzing perspectives, which you should have done in your research phase, but now is your chance and opportunity to present the variety of perspectives that you've done research on within your various lenses for your research topic. Now, as you can see here, one of our keys is going to be synthesizing perspectives. And what we mean by that is taking them and placing our sources in conversation with one another. While one source says this, another says this, right? Showing similarities, maybe differing ideas or perspectives in relation to your topic. Um, so that's going to be one of the focuses of the video today. Uh, as you can see for row four, our highest scoring rubric row down here, uh, we really want to make sure our argument is organized, clear, and convincing. And how we'll do that is by connecting our ideas back to our claims that we're going to make to prove our thesis, which we'll talk about with body paragraphs today. Lastly, in our body paragraphs is going to be really scored on selecting and using evidence, row five, which is do we have sufficient, credible, and relevant evidence to support each one of our claims? So ultimately, there are five goals that we're shooting for in each body paragraph. We want to present claims to support our thesis and to further our argument in some way. When presenting those claims, we want to select and use evidence to support claims, right? We want them to, it to be relevant, sufficient, and credible. We want to make sure that we are synthesizing, and that's probably one of our biggest goals in this paper, is synthesizing ideas by either connecting sources within paragraphs or noting the relationship across paragraphs. Uh, a fourth goal here is going to be presenting a variety of perspectives around our problem or maybe a variety of perspectives around our solutions that we're talking about. And then lastly, we want to ensure that we're not just citing sources and evidence and leaving it there, but we're also adding our own commentary, analysis, and reasoning that further explains how that evidence might connect to a claim or help to prove an idea that you're attempting to prove. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at um, some keys to success in body paragraphs and kind of have a checklist here. And then we're going to look at uh, one or two body paragraphs to uh, together and kind of you'll see the highlights on uh, where you see these different ideas present in a body paragraph. And then lastly, I'll give you some supporting documents um, in sentence stems that should help you with synthesis or introducing source ideas and things like that. So again, what we should really have and how I would break up your body paragraphs is into the key parts you see here. Uh, first, you know that opening sentence of your body paragraph should be a topic sentence, right? It should reveal what lens you're looking through, what main claim or idea will be explained, presented, or proven throughout that body paragraph. So really asking yourself, what's the paragraph about and explaining it? What claim are you trying to prove that will actually help to support your thesis? Or what lens are you presenting? Um, we also want to have like kind of sub claims. So if we have a key claim, we want to have some sub claims. What types of ideas will help you to prove that main claim? Right. Based on your topic sentence, what ideas will you need to present within that paragraph to help to establish your claim? That can be evidence as well as we think about it. Um, a third thing we want to make sure we do here, again, we want to use credible, relevant, and sufficient evidence to support our claim. When we're using our evidence, we want to have some credibility lead-ins to introduce our sources of evidence so that we know if they come from credible places. We want to know that we have more than one piece of evidence to prove a claim, right? Sufficient means more than one. Uh, there is no key number for sufficient. Uh, it's 
is there enough to prove the idea? Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's five pieces of evidence. It depends on the claim that you're trying to make, but more than one is always going to be necessary there. And lastly, we want to make sure that it's relevant to our claim. You want to be citing evidence that actually proves your point, not something that kind of does not fit with the key point you're trying to make. Um, after we introduce our various pieces of evidence, we have an opportunity to synthesize and add in our own ideas through what's called analysis and commentary, which is just a simple one to five sentence explanation in your own words. How does that cited evidence relate to your idea or help to prove your claim? What can you conclude or what are you reasoning from that source's information? How does that relate back maybe to another source? Or how does that relate to a previous point you've made throughout your paper, maybe in a previous body paragraph? So analysis and commentary is your own explanation of the evidence that further clarifies, concludes, and connects to other ideas throughout your paper. Towards the end of any body paragraph, we know we might, and this could even be a part of your commentary, we know we need to reestablish everything from the body paragraph and how that helps to further our argument for organization's sake. So some sort of connection or concluding sentence that almost restates what your topic sentence is, but shows how your evidence has proven your claim in that body paragraph is going to be something you want to do there. And then lastly, some sort of transition either at the end of a body paragraph or at the start of the next body paragraph. So let's take a look at an example here. I'll move my uh, screen over so you can see kind of my key over here. This is a sample body paragraph from the exemplar paper we read, which is a call for night shift regulation. If you ever want to take a look at uh, any sample papers, I've linked them in. Uh, College Board sample papers are posted over here under samples and commentary, and you would want to click task two to look at high scoring examples throughout uh, College Board's page. Um, so we are taking a look at this example, a call for night shift regulation. And this is a single body paragraph really looking through the medical perspective. As you can see here, the writer starts out with a topic sentence that explains what they're going to present or prove within this paragraph. Well, they reveal that they're looking through the medical lens, which is something you can include in your topic sentence, and they directly state what's going to be explained in this paragraph. They're going to explain that researchers suggest that minimizing circadian misalignment can reduce long-term health effects for night shift workers. And they're probably going to mention ways in which they can reduce this circadian misalignment. So they've presented a topic sentence here. Um, such a measure includes the aforementioned treatments for sleep problems. So aforementioned indicates they're relating an I to a previous idea or relating back to an idea that they've presented in the paper earlier. That would be an example of synthesis. Um, anytime you can say aforementioned and relate back to an idea, that gives you an opportunity to synthesize your ideas here. Um, you can see highlighted in pink are some explanations or where they add in their own analysis and commentary to further explain an idea. So while targeting the night shifts, night shift workers can adjust their work schedules to suit their biological rhythms. So that's an idea that's kind of a subclaim to help to prove what this paragraph is about or help to help to prove the claim that they can directly minimize circadian misalignment. Now, as we look throughout the rest of this body paragraph, we kind of see them introduce a variety of different pieces of evidence that's highlighted in a light blue color here. So those are direct quotes from their sources. Before they introduce evidence, you can see they have credibility lead-ins like we learned in class where they introduce the source, the author, their expertise, all of those good things that show that this comes from a trustworthy place. Um, throughout uh, this sample paragraph, if you wanna pause the video and read it, you can see directly how they go from evidence, commentary, and then a connection to a next piece of evidence, commentary, and a connection to a third piece of evidence. And so I think that this paragraph is really great for seeing synthesis uh, within a body paragraph. So this is one sample body paragraph that we can look at um, to kind of use as a guide to make sure we're hitting on all the things that we need to do 
to have a strong body paragraph. Uh, another one is located here. So if you wanted to see another example, feel free to pause the video and take a look here. But again, you see them start with a topic sentence here at the top. They're looking uh, through the legal lens here and they're arguing that night shift workers face issues with health and safety. Therefore, there needs to be some sort of legal intervention from the government, right? So that's the claim they are proving. You can see they introduced the credibility of an author. They have evidence here that helps to prove their claim. And then they add in their own commentary that goes to clarify and conclude what that evidence suggests to help to further their argument in some way. So both of these body paragraphs are great exemplars to look at as you're starting to form your own body paragraph. But as you're thinking about structure, it really is topic sentence. What's it going to be about your different sources throughout introducing them and explaining the evidence uh, after you've revealed what that evidence is. That is your goal of each body paragraph to help to prove your thesis statement. Now, in order to support you here uh, with drafting body paragraphs over the next few days, I've linked in some of the most useful resources that should help with body paragraphs right here. Uh, the first one, as you go to introduce your sources, I have this credibility or attribution line one pager that might help support you with choosing how to introduce your source or your author. So take a look at that one pager uh, as you're introducing your sources. Um, this document here, the best sentence stems ever is probably one of my favorite resources for supporting synthesis, connecting ideas. Um, and essentially what this document is, is it's providing you with these stems, but it kind of has subject areas. Um, if you're trying to, for example, for example, um, introduce a researcher's findings, right? We're going to have to do that in this paper. It gives a number of different ways in which you can do that. Maybe we want to uh, disprove an idea. It gives us some sentence stems that we can use to do that. I'm signaling who's saying what, right? Meta commentary. All of this stuff will help you with commentary, with explanation, and with introducing evidence in some way. Uh, a third resource I have here for you is a YouTube video that I've created that really shows you how to use the citation toolbar. So whenever you're ready to do in-text citations and your reference page citations for your body paragraphs, take a look at that video. Some people prefer to do that along the way. Feel free to do that or come back and make sure you do that at the end. Um, if you decide to do it at the end, whenever you introduce evidence, make sure you just indicate what source you're using so that you can cite it later on. A final resource I have here for all of you um, is our discourse markers one pager, and it has a list of discourse markers. One thing that's going to be really important to have an organized argument and to synthesize ideas is going to be using transitions and discourse markers, which kind of help us to follow your train of thought to help us to follow your clear line of reasoning. And so you can take a look at my sample discourse markers here, and I even have a list, in, I've linked that in, of various discourse markers that might help support you with those transitions and showing relationships between your ideas. So all of these resources are here at your disposal. We have tons of sample papers to take a look at that we can use for support, and you have your outline, which kind of has the structure you need to move into body paragraphs. Um, I wish you the best of luck as you are drafting these body paragraphs and make sure you are working hard. May 2nd is our submission deadline for our AP research papers. Have a great day.